Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Alexander Lim and we are on another episode of Author Story. Our featured book is Albert Joseph's Field Guide to Punctuation for the Observant, the Dismissive, the Curious, the Confused, which you can check out by clicking on the Amazon link in the video description below. Its author, Jenny Hammer, is an outdoor enthusiast and trail hiker who has spent decades, I believe it's over 30 years, teaching English to non-native speakers. So Jenny, welcome to Author Story. Thank you very much for being our guest. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So Jenny, what made you decide to write uh, Albert Joseph's Field Guide to Punctuation? Was this something you decided uh, on because of an aha moment, a moment of inspiration, or like something that, you know, over the years or over time you realized you've got to write this thing out? Well, as a book, it uh, was inspired by a, a young adult story that I wrote, and that's why, why there's the confusing uh, title of Albert Drosif's Field Guide to Punctuation. He was a character, or is a character, in the children's book. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the, but the book is sort of a, a reference guide for the lay person, and that, I think, came from my years of teaching English mm -hmm. and seeing all the guides and all the, the grammar books that, that were really too, pedantic, too hard to understand. So I wanted to make punctuation uh, interesting and exciting and and helpful. Okay, okay, got that. So uh, Albert, Albert Joseph, you mentioned that he's in the uh, children's book. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've encountered this character before. Well, you haven't because the children's book is as yet unpublished. Oh, but okay. He, but the, the main character in the book, um, Arden Evers encounters this man, mm -hmm. Albert Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, in chapter 19, and she um, discovers that he raises punctuation marks mm -hmm. in a vivarium. Okay. So that punctuation marks are living creatures. And that's sort of the, the basis of this book. It's a, a field guide to punctuation that is structured like a, a field guide to birds or a field guide to trees. Okay. <laughs> All right. But uh, weren't you, I have to ask, weren't you a little concerned? I mean, if you make this thing like a field guide, might it this not be like, you know, kind of, how do you make it, how do you make it sort of like accessible to the lay person rather than say someone who's a bird lover or an animal lover or something like that? Well, the, the idea, that's the layout. So, um, it has, for example, it'll have the, the, the mark. Mm -hmm. And then it has common names of the mark. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the at sign is called the per commercial at mm -hmm. or the rate sign. Mm -hmm. And then it's broken down into description field marks, voice, range and habitat, uh, examples, and then exotics. So the idea is that as you read or as you write, mm -hmm. um, th th there are these marks that are located in certain places. That's the range, you know, where they quote unquote live. Right, right. And, I, and, um, and I think that, that that's helpful because it, it's, it's making people aware of, the, of small things mm -hmm. that make a huge difference in writing and in understanding what you read. Okay, so uh, let me just go a little bit on the basics, uh, what essentially are punctuation marks? I mean, like most people, you know, they could think like a period's just a small item here, but what exactly are punctuation marks? Well, there are symbols that signify certain things. Uh, for example, the comma, well, a long time ago in Greek, um, there were no spaces between letters. The, all, the letters were all capitals mm -hmm. and writing was predominantly spoken. So the, the original punctuation marks were ways to designate to a reader or a speaker where to pause. Um, and Aristophanes fr from the Library of Alexandria started the, this process of using little marks to, to notate how to breathe, how to pause. Um, the, the tone of the voice. So really punctuation marks, a lot of them came from 
the oral reading of text. Okay, and of course, it developed into the written language. I mean, it evolved into the written language, into the, uh, the system we know today. Right, and it really become, became solidified after the invention of the printing press. Right. Because different, you know, different people would would punctuate, would use different kinds of marks. Right. But right. but after the printing of the printing press, things became pretty standardized. Right, because everyone had to had everyone wherever they went. I mean, they had to understand whatever it was that was on the page. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So. Everyday usage. How important are punctuation marks in everyday usage? Well, they they're very important in terms of uh, understanding what you read, and also, um, uh, well, case in point, the the serial comma, uh, which is also called the series comma or the Oxford comma or the Harvard comma, uh, is very important, and the lack of it has led to lawsuits. Um, I have a couple of instances, not in the book, but but uh, uh, in uh, 2017, there was a lawsuit here in the United States uh, in the Oakhurst Dairy, and the drivers were suing. Mm -hmm. The judge in the case said, for lack of a, a comma, we have this case. And it was a, a, a $5 million settlement. Whoa based on the, the a comma. This comma was worth $5 million. Wow. So it, it's not just for clarity of writing and reading, but it's also an economic thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, there are cases, well, in the eight, 1872, and, um, a tariff, the writing of a tariff statute, uh, a comma, a serial or a series comma was left off and, and that cost, well, I think it was $2 million at the time, which today would be, um, well, I don't know, $38 million. Okay, okay. So, so punctuation can also be very costly if uh -huh. it's it's wrong. Right. And you're, you're speaking about, of examples in the uh, in the legal field, in, uh, in, technical, in technical things like that. But mm -hmm. how about in everyday usage? Like, I mean, the average Joe or the average Jane. Well, it, it, it creates a good punctuation or correct punctuation makes things clear. For example, I think what was um, this past Sunday was the Oscars. And, mm -hmm. and at the Oscars, everybody thanks people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, thank my, I thank my mother. I thank this person. So imagine if someone... Uh, of course, this is oral, but if it was if it were written, right. it would be based on a comma or the lack of a, a series comma. Right. So, if someone stands up, um, there was a comedian years ago who who used the, 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 who who used the example of of her being uh, the love child of Mick Jagger and Haley Mills. Mm -hmm. So, if she were to stand up and at the Oscars and say, I thank, I would like to thank my parents, comma, right. uh, Mick Jagger, comma, and Haley Mills. Mm -hmm. She's thanking four people, her parents and then the two others. But if you leave off the Siri, the serial comma or the right. series comma, then she would say, uh, I'd like to thank my parents, comma, Mick Jagger and Haley Mills, which means that Mick Jagger and Haley Mills are her parents. Mm. So it makes a, a big change in in meaning. Right. Punctuation can make a big change. Right. You know, I, I brought this up because I mean, um, like in social media, like in, in stuff like uh, short feeds, like Twitter and uh, things like that, mm -hmm. uh, not much attention is being paid to punctuation mark. Heck, even with spelling, come to think of it. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, how, how would you say um, the state of punctuation is um, at present, particularly where, where social media is concerned? Well, where social media is concerned, um, the, 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 it's fast writing and it's um, sometimes not well thought out writing. Mm -hmm. um, and the lack of punctuation can change meaning or make people misunderstand things. I believe that uh, punctuation is is 
being superseded by emoticons. Mm -hmm. People people want to you want to convey what their intent is, what their meaning is, and rather than using punctuation, right. they slip these other things in. Right. But but the the, the uh, modern day social media writing is fast. Mm -hmm. I call a lot of the writing you know, emotional splats. If people are writing before they have uh, thought their thoughts connected and and understood. Right. So in other in other words, what seems to come on social media is like uh, how do I put? It? It's just like the raw stuff, you know. It's not like it's been thought out. It's been processed. And right. It's, it's really like just raw stuff. Well, I call it fast English. We have fast food, and now we have or fast language. I mean, it's not just in English, but uh, it's fat. It's fast language. And oftentimes, fast language is language that hasn't been thought through mm -hmm. completely. And when that happens in a tweet, then you know, a lot oftentimes, it's either it comes across as wrong or it is wrong, and then people have to walk it back somehow. Right, right. If so it, if it were thought through before it, before being written, mm -hmm. then that communication would be clear. Right, right. So, in other words, uh, the clarity is not there. I mean, without without the use proper use of punctuation marks. Right, right. Clarity and understanding are the main are the main reasons to focus on punctuation. Right. So, um, I know you you, you mentioned this earlier, but so uh, emojis actually emoticons. These are these are intended, I think, to you know d display particular nuances, but, right? But they don't really do they. In your opinion, do these things really uh, do what they're supposed to do? Uh, I don't. I don't really know. I can't speak to that because I don't okay. use them, and I find them highly irritating when I okay. see them. So <laughs> that's my personal, uh, my personal peeve. Uh, but okay. uh, I think they are they, they can be useful in terms of in terms of conveying emotion the emotion of the person right. who who's writing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you if you write more carefully, that emotion would come through and and irony would come through and people wouldn't have to um, wouldn't have to use emoticons. It's a it's an extra step that that. You know, good punctuation would 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 be um, easier to do. Right. Okay. 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 Got that. So let me go, go a little bit uh, on a, on a bit of another topic because okay. I mean, I mean, languages, linguistic mm -hmm. shifts take place as as languages evolve. Correct. And, um, you know, things like like one example that kind of irritates me is the use of lay instead of lie. You know, lay down instead of lie down. Right. Um, are punctuation marks, uh, do punctuation marks change with the uh, linguistic shifts? Are, are they like, you know, they're really like there? Well, they have evolved over time. And that's uh, in the book. Uh, that's one thing I wanted to put in mm -hmm. was the history of the marks. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a history of punctuation marks, where they came from and how they changed over time. For example, the um the 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 dollar sign okay the history, the history of the dollar sign is is that it was it's probably a ligature which is a smashing up together of two letters okay. of the p and the s of peso okay. because at the time you know spain was the world power in the 1500s right and i mean uh, uh, lots of countries still have the peso Right. Uh, the Philippines and Mexico, the peso is is the currency. Right. And that P and S uh, were written together, and then that became the S with the line through it, which is the the dollar sign today. So, <clears throat> so the punctuation marks change, but but also language, as you say, lay and lie, uh, changes. If you talk to any copy editor, they they would say, um, you know, some of these changes are just mistakes, and they 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 should be copy edited and be correct. Another another interesting 
punctuation mark that ch has changed over time is the is the at sign, mm -hmm. which was uh, was the or originating mark of at was et meaning and in Latin, right? And, and a, a, a a graffitied and incised graffito of et was even found in um, Pompeii mm -hmm. after. Vesuvius. So these things are very old, and that ligature changed over time to look like the at sign that we have today. So, oh. so language changes and, and punctuation marks have changed. Okay, but of course the need to use punctuation marks for clarity, that, that doesn't change. No, that doesn't change. Right, okay. So Jenny, I'm sure you've done a lot of research for this book. Was there anything that really surprised you when you were doing your research? Um, well, let's see, I, I was surprised at, um, at the histories, the histories of some of the marks and uh, some of the fun things that, that uh, of the marks, for example, the, the ampersand, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know this <clears throat> the amp in, um, long time ago in elementary schools, uh, wrote memorization and recitation. All right. Children would children would recite the alphabet, mm -hmm. A B C D, right. and and then at the end there would be the at the and sign, the little and symbol, right. and then they would say <clears throat> per se, which is Latin for that is to mean, mm -hmm. and. So when they're reciting the alphabet, they would go X Y Z, and mm -hmm. per se. And, and that became ampersand. Ah. If you see a lot of um, needlepoint samplers of you know done by girls in the 17 and 1800s, right. where they're they're practicing their sewing and they're embroidering mm -hmm. the letters of the alphabet, mm -hmm. there are many many needlepoint um, or embroidered samplers that have after the letter Z, mm -hmm. they have the ampersand. I see. I found that fascinating. I thought that was really interesting. Wow, interesting, interesting. And, and, I mean, there, there is, there's a lot of history to this stuff. Then I mean, it's not just it, it appeared out of nowhere. There is, uh, there is basis for, for all these punctuations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I wrote the book. Um, uh, there's a quote, I think it was Saul Bellow. Somebody asked him, why did you write, you know, this, right. this book and that book? And he said, I write the books I want to read. Mm. And so in one sense, having this book is is um, something that I wanted to have everything together. I wanted to have the, 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 the history and the marks and how to use them all together in one place. Right, okay, okay. Now, with regards to punctuation marks, I believe there's a new one. I, I think you mentioned this. Uh, Dolos. Mm -hmm, the Dolos this, mark. Yeah. What, what's this? What's this all about? Well, this is a, a, a new a new punctuation mark that we're um, putting out in the world. The Grizzly Peak Press, uh, my publisher, okay. uh, is working to. Uh, cre well, Grizzly Peak Press created the um, the font a font and the symbol, mm -hmm. and the the Dolos. Double D O L O S is a punctuation mark that goes on either side of a lie. So, uh -huh. one one name for it would be the lie mark. Okay. And this is um, brand new. People can download the font and have this dolos. But but in in times when there are a lot of unfactual things said right. or written right this is a quick way to 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 show that what you are writing or what you are citing mm -hmm. is not verifiably true it is is in fact a lie mm -hmm. dolos with one d mm -hmm. was the greek god of deception mm -hmm. and so the dolos mark can be used by fact checkers and and people who want to make sure that 
other people understand that a, a statement is not true. Right, right, okay. And I mean, this this dolos in itself, this, this seems like, you know, the continuing evolution of punctuation marks. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm sure, but, like, more will come into play in, in the future to suit, uh, to suit future needs. Yeah, well, we hope that people will adopt it. Um, we, there is a mark, the SICK mark, S-I-C. Mm -hmm. It's in brackets and italicized. Mm -hmm. And that's a mark that designates um, that, you know, you're, you're copying or quoting or citing someone else's speech or writing. And you want to make sure that people understand that the mistake or the misspelling or the, uh, or the untruth is not yours. Right. It was the original. Um, but, but the dolos... Uh, is more for for lies and fraudulent fraudulent statements, whether they be from politicians or from corporations. There, there's a, a perfect example for a dolos in, in 1994 when the CEO of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company mm -hmm. was before the Senate in a in a committee meeting, and he stated, you know, cigarettes are no more addictive than coffee, tea, or Twinkies. Hmm. Well, that's verifiably untrue. Right. So that would be an instance. Dolos. Okay. All right. All right. Got that. Got that. So about the, the process of writing the book, what for you was the most fun part of writing this book? Researching the history. Mm -hmm. um, I also, you know, I, I use all kinds of sources and and manuals of style to get the to get the the, the actual punctuation example because there's an example there are example sentences for every punctuation mark how to use them correctly right. and then as Albert Drosif describes it how do you how they are used sometimes they show up as exotics mm -hmm. um, he describes it as exotics meaning punctuation marks that are in a place where they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Some people would say, well, that's an error or a mistake. Mm -hmm. But but the the book uh, is very non-threatening and, and not in the in the um, prologue. He talks about how he's not a grammarian mm -hmm. and he's not a prescriptivist. You know, a lot of grammar books or or punctuation guides, they're very they're very browbeating and, you know, this is wrong and this is right. And um, this book, it makes it a little more, more pleasant to, to learn about the marks and what they, what they do and why we have them. Right, okay. All right, so let me flip that question around then. What for you was the most difficult part of writing this book? The, well, <clears throat> one difficult part, and, and this is a, some people find this a, a weird, a weird thing to have in the book, mm -hmm. and that is the um, the class, order, family, genus, and species. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And that that is completely um, completely fiction. Okay, okay. Obviously, because punctuation marks are not living creatures, and so they don't. <laughs> They're not really part of um, Linnaeus's taxonomy, but but to have that is again to follow the structure of a field guide mm -hmm. for animals, and also uh, it it by the by the Latin terms you can see the the relationship of some of the marks. Mm -hmm. So some of them are, are graffiti, and uh, I won't go into it, but but right. that that was hard. A because, but it was also interesting to me to find a Latin term that would describe uh, the family of the genus, and then also to run it by people who speak Latin. And, right, right, right. Uh, I had to I had to change quite a quite a number of them because they were saying, "No, that's not that's not the way you would do it." So, right, right. But that that part was fun. Okay. Right. But it's also difficult because <laughs> right. I don't speak Latin and I'm not a botanist or a biologist. So, but I, I, I love science, 
a lot of the example sentences are science based mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and also, you know, they're factual uh, or they've been empirically tested right. uh, so that we know them as facts. And that that came from from Albert Joseph himself, who who was encouraged to write the book by the, the little girl protagonist of the uh, of the other story. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he was encouraged by her to get out into the real world. You know, he was in his vivarium and and concerned about these punctuation marks, but he didn't see the larger world. So he went out into nature to discover example sample sent example sentences mm -hmm. from nature and also from from the experiences that were related to him by Arden Evers, mm -hmm. the, okay. the girl in the other book. Right. OK, cool. I got that. So, uh, Jenny, let's say you came across someone who wanted to have a career where writing is involved, you know, things like journalist and author, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you had only enough time to tell that person one thing about the proper use of punctuation marks. What would be that one thing you'd tell them? Hmm. Well, I, I think I would probably work with the comma mm -hmm. and explain that we don't put commas in where we breathe. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I, oh, when I was growing up, I thought, oh, you put a comma in where you would breathe if you were speaking. Mm -hmm. And so, so commas to me were like breathing marks. Okay. And a lot of, a lot of writers hyperventilate. Okay. Uh, right. They put too many in or they don't put in uh, enough of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are gr grammatical reasons for a comma, mm -hmm. um, you know, to set off extra information or to put some words before the main subject of a sentence. But I, I, think, I think I would recommend to a writer that they understand, understand, the, understand commas. And also that they, uh, that they know the difference between it, is, it's, mm -hmm. yes. and it's. That's a really, really common error that people make. So, uh, in the last minute or so of this interview, Jenny, are there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share, maybe, to inspire listeners? I would, I would recommend that people be more observant uh, in what they read mm -hmm. and in what they write, and also observant in the in the natural world. You know, small things make a big difference. Uh, a, a carbon atom. Uh, is the basis of a, a lot of life. Uh, punctuation is the basis of a lot of good writing. Mm -hmm. I'd also say that that um, and and Albert Joseph quotes a, a poem by um, J. V. Cunningham. It's not enough uh, to know how to punctuate. Mm -hmm. You have to have ideas. Mm -hmm. And the, the line from the poem is. Um, for you have, for you have learned not what to say, but how the saying should be said. So I think it's important for people to focus more on on their ideas and supporting those ideas with with facts. Then you know you know it's fine to be grammatically correct and and punctuate everything correctly and dot your I's and cross your T's. But if you don't have something to say, or if what you say is not well thought out, mm -hmm. then the whole enterprise is, is sort of a, a waste of time. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, interesting words of wisdom right there. So then in closing, the book is Albert Albert Joseph's Field Guide to Punctuation for the Observant, the Dismissive, the Curious, the Confused. And the book's author is Jenny Hammer. So, Jenny, thank you very much for being an author story. It was very interesting to speak to you about uh, something that a lot of folks really take for granted, punctuation. Thank you, Alex. All right, you're welcome. And so, everyone, by all means, check out Albert Droz's Field Guide to Punctuation and also take a gander at some of our other authors and books, which we've already covered in author story. 
and subscribe to our channel if you want. So, see you guys all next time on Author Story, or when we speak to another great author about another awesome book.